I'm here with Matt Firth. And it's great to have you on. You're a Zen evangelist, and you also yep. work for a company called Foundry. And Correct. perhaps yep. you, you can tell us a little bit about your role there and how you became involved with Horizon as well. Yeah, yeah, sure thing. So Foundry is it's a wholly owned subsidiary of Digital Currency Group, DCG. We are the, um, the infrastructure arm. We're focused on decentralizing infrastructure, both on the proof of work side of the world, as well as the proof of stake side of the world. And so my role at Foundry, I work as a blockchain data analyst, and my role really entails a lot of um, pro both product and project management on the staking side of our business. So on November 10th, we publicly launched our staking business. We've been staking internally, both our own assets, DCG's assets, Genesis's assets for uh, over a year and a half now. Uh, but as of a couple of weeks ago, we wanted to open up that up to the, to the rest of the world at the institutional level. So my role specifically is I work as an intermediary between our engineering team and uh, the business to help uh, bring staking projects forward to make sure that we can support as many protocols in the most secure, efficient way as possible to deliver um, great staking experiences to our customers. That's great. And you mentioned to the institution level, are there any plans to open that up to smaller investors? At this point, we're focused uh, exclusively on institutions as far as you know our marketing and our communications goes. Now, there are a number of protocols um, that do allow the retail to, to delegate or stake to our nodes. Uh, but at this point, no, we don't necessarily have any plans to um, target retail. Yeah. Okay. So mainly, yeah, focusing on the large institutions and getting them yep. involved with staking and locking away that precious zen off the yep. market. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's great. And one thing you help educate institutions about is single address staking. And that's yep. something that maybe is relatively new to a lot of people. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what that is and why that's important? Yeah, yeah. So um, I believe it was, I want to say in April, maybe don't quote me on that, I may be wrong. Uh, within, the past, uh, within the past six months or so, uh, the Horizon team opened up single address staking for, uh, for secure nodes. And so prior to single address staking, what <clears throat> the process was is, um, as, as we know, Secure nodes require 42 Zen per node to stake. And prior to that, you needed a unique wallet for each Zen that you were, excuse me, each secure node that you were staking on, uh, which became uh, for, for many, for institutions that we were working with, you know, doing it on the large scale, it was, became a very cumbersome process managing all of those wallets. And so when the team um, enabled single address staking, it opened up a whole new world wherein, um, as, as far as user experience can go, wherein you know the users can store their Zen in a single address, they can stake to a, a number of other addresses from that address, and what's more is the uh, payouts from those um, from those stake nodes can be sent to multiple different addresses. So, from a user experience standpoint, it became much much less cumbersome. And part of what we at Foundry are doing is educating our customers on you know not only what uh, the Zen project, the Horizon project is. Um, and the staking available through it and, and you know the benefits that that affords them and the network um, but also the how easy the process and straightforward the process is now um, to make it as smooth as possible for them that's excellent yeah and, and i'd stress as well for people watching uh it's not just for institutions this single address staking it's for yes. anyone so that they can do it as well um, even if you've only got two nodes um, you can set up single yep. address staking have it all on one uh, and I guess one of the benefits for that is you could have your nodes running on Ledger uh, device, mm -hmm. a hardware wallet, and you can set a payout address to perhaps Sphere. Uh, and then each yep. week your payments just get sent to your Sphere wallet automatically while your stake Zen is locked away safe on a hardware wallet. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And um, yeah, and very time, uh, a big time saver for those with a lot of nodes. You don't have to manually mm -hmm. withdraw the rewards and, and manage all of that. Um, so yeah, if people want more information about that, it's on the horizon.io website, or you can reach mm -hmm. out to the support at the team as well, and they can help you get started if you want to set your nodes up for single address staking. Yep. And let's talk a little bit about your story and how you became involved in uh, blockchain and um, how long you've been as an evangelist for. Yeah, so... I'm uh, relatively new to the blockchain world. I um, really dove in in January of 2021 when I uh, took this job with Foundry. Prior to that, 
I was working um, a lot of project management and operations management at education technology companies. Uh, you know, I was ready for a bit of a change and uh, my wife was in crypto. She had been in crypto for quite some time. And despite her uh, having been in it, I never really took the time to dive into it and look into it and learn about it. But when I did, I, you know, I read the Bitcoin white paper. So Bitcoin is really my on-ramp into, um, into crypto. And after reading it, I think it was the second or third time, I just had this light bulb moment where I was like, all right, this is it. This is what I'm going to do for the rest of my career. Um, and so, yeah, I ended up, I was fortunate enough to have found Foundry and, um, you know, have applied and, and gotten an offer. And so that was really my uh, first entrance into not only into crypto, but one of my first projects was to learn about Horizon, the Horizon project. Um, Foundry, we stake uh, Zen ourselves. And we also uh, help to uh, stake TCG Zen. And so uh, my job was to really learn as much about it as I can and help to um, translate some of the more technical aspects of it into, um, into terms that um, maybe some of the other business people that aren't as technical could understand. That's great. And you loved it so much. You took it a step further and became a Zen evangelist. To help. Yeah, I mean, it's, I dove right into the community and what a great community, like, you know, incredibly intelligent, incredibly understanding, patient, uh, you know, as, as we all know, you know, crypto is a very technical place and you can get down lots of rabbit holes very quickly. Um, and sometimes, you know, it can be a little bit overwhelming you know, when you see how much other people know. Um, but the beautiful thing about, you know, this Horizon community in particular is, you know, you dive into the Discord or the Telegram and people are patient. You know, you ask basic questions, what seem basic uh, to a lot of us now because we've been in the space for quite some time. But when you're starting can be extremely overwhelming, um, but you know, people are patient explaining things. And so I decided that, you know, I wanna take that step forward to become the, to become a Zen evangelist. I listen to, um, you know, the weekly calls every, every Monday as part of my Monday routine on Spotify, you know, fire up the, the weekly calls. Um, and so, yeah, I just decided that, you know, I really wanted to be able to help really evangelize the, the project, um, both, you know, within my job, obviously, but also, you know, when speaking with friends and family um, and, and helping to really spread the word about this, this great project. That's great. And with the Zendu having just launched, what are you most excited for about that going forward? I mean, I'm ex we're just in the beginning, it seems like, you know, there's so much potential. Um, so I'm just excited to see the incredible, innovative, brilliant things that the community comes up with, uh, you know, new entrance into the, into the ecosystem um, and really seeing what, what we can unlock and how we can really promote um, decentralization, the use of uh, privacy pre preserving technology um, in such a way that, you know, we, we really help to be a force of, of good in the world. Um, to bring forth some of these, um, how do I say this? To bring forth some of these very, very um, interesting and, and, and fun new opportunities that we can unlock as a, as a community here. That's great. And being relatively new to the space, but it's been a, a, a big year for crypto this year. Um, mm -hmm. And I guess you've got a unique perspective being on the institutional side and mm -hmm. working directly with uh, big businesses and that. Um, well, I'm wondering what type of trends you're seeing um, behind the scenes and perhaps, you know, we, we don't, uh, we're, we're not privy to um, well, much excitement and, you know, where do you see the future um, of crypto going from what you've seen? Yeah, so, you know, certainly, uh, a lot more interest from, uh, we'll say, we'll say less crypto native institutions. So, you know, not only the v venture capital firms or, or hedge funds or private equity firms that uh, maybe had an exposure to crypto you know, prior uh, to this recent bull run, but we're seeing interest from other more traditional technology companies, more tra uh, traditional banks. Um, as far as some of the other um, some of the other challenges that we're seeing behind the scenes. And I think that this is, this is part of the, the discussion, you know, now, but you know, the, w there's a lot of attention to and concern with uh, regulatory, uh, what, what is the regulatory landscape going to look like and how that unfold. And so um, a lot of our job is really learning about that and, and educating our customers as much as we can about what we know um, and helping them get to geared with, helping, helping them get to a point where they feel geared up with enough information to make a, a solid decision 
um, that they're comfortable with. You know, we're not necessarily making any recommendations, um, but you know, understanding the landscape and, and and seeing where where things are going in terms of in, in terms of um, uh, the regulatory climate. Thanks, Matt. Um, you've given us plenty to think about, and it's really great to learn what you're doing behind the scenes and and everything related to to foundry and uh, the staking business that you're involved with. And I'd like to say thank Great, you thank for you. for joining us and uh, yes, looking forward you. to yeah seeing how things grow as we move forward. Yeah, certainly, certainly, very very exciting times ahead. Great, thanks, Matt. Great, thank you. <laughs>